uh, since multifamily properties have been popular with institutions for some time now, what niche or type of multifamily assets do you focus on still and, and you can still make money in that area? Thanks, Richard. Uh, we actually look uh, for properties that are owned by institutional groups and larger owner operators. The larger owner operators sometimes streamline operations so much uh, that we find opportunities to tighten expenses or increase our revenue just by simply changing management. You know, oftentimes these larger operators, they, they do things a particular way and they deploy that over thousands of units and, um, and we'll find, you know, very quickly opportunities to, uh, to either cut fat or drive revenue by, by things that have just been neglected over time. So that's one area that we, that we try to focus on. Um, we also try to covet properties that are in smaller tertiary markets. Much of the older apartment stock in the larger markets, the primary markets, they've often been renovated sometimes four to five times uh, by various owners in one real estate cycle. So we've established hyper local knowledge. You know, what we're doing uh, within our investment platform is, is not only looking at, uh, you know, strong tertiary markets, but the micro location within that tertiary market. So finding a well-located property, uh, you know, it's, it's critical, obviously, but in being nimble enough to dive into these very micro locations, you know, we're often finding value in places where institutional owners often overlook for various reasons. Um, and then I'd also say additionally, given the nature of our fund and the structure of our fund, uh, it's lended itself to a variety of, of different options in terms of our value creation strategies. Um, you know, anecdotally, we were able to buy a property in North Carolina uh, with the full intent of uh, deploying a very particular specific uh, value creation strategy. And inadvertently, the uh, neighboring property uh, was able to be acquired off market. So we acquired that property, merged the two properties, totally revamped our uh, value creation strategy to a, a holistic uh, approach to encompass two assets and manage them as one. So just the ability to be flexible and nimble and, uh, and adjust uh, different strategies as needed has, has been very successful for us. Yeah, that's great. Um, I just got back from a trip because I'm on the board of a real estate uh, company and they, the same thing, had a multifamily property. They went to go get permission on the easement for the property next door and ended up buying that property and expanding it. And, you know, relative to your comment earlier about tertiary markets, I mean, it used to be that people went to Denver or Nashville for the better quality deals. And, you know, now there's enough competition that I know a lot of firms are looking in places like Jacksonville um, or Tallahassee or, you know, St. Petersburg, Tampa, or kind of another, another half notch more tertiary than what it would have been maybe five to seven years ago or 10 years ago, um, trying to stay a half step ahead of the institutional flow of capital that's searching for that, that cap rate they need. So appreciate you sharing all of that. This content was created by commercialrealestate.com. Access our community, investment databases, training, and live events by visiting www.commercialrealestate.com.